Um, my story is a little different. I was in the ACI. It's probably a lot different. I went there in 1998. I am the first juvenile in the history of Rhode Island to have ever been charged as an adult. Um, it's not easy to talk about it, but I'm here because I was just, I was tortured. Um, the first day I walked into the ACI, um, the first thing they took me to was segregation. It was scary. I can't lie. Um, I shake just thinking about it. They told me that if that didn't work for me, they want to ship my ASS out of state. Then they continued and they put me in another, um, wing, which was called D-Wing, which was when you first come in and they put me in a room all by myself. Um, I'm not saying that I shouldn't have paid for what I did. I understand now I'm an adult. I get it. But the torture that they put you through, segregation, it's, it was horrible. I went there for things that, I, that make me angry now. Somebody dropped a note. It wasn't my note. The CEO said it was mine. I got written up. How many? 30 days. 25 days. 30 days. I never got one paper that was like 5 days or 15 days. It was always 30 days. And it's always, oh, she's the most dangerous inmate we have. It's not she's a, a teenager, she's not adjusted to this, we got to help her, um, she needs mental health, um, school, GED. Um, the only person that I could say that that like, really believed and helped me was Miss Richmond. And when Miss Richmond was around, everything was quiet. But the minute they heard her heels walk away, everything changed. It was for anything and everything. I was accused of stealing yarn. Back then you could crochet in the prison. I got accused of stealing a yarn, and they gave me 30 days in segregation in the hole, down, way down. It's first floor, second floor, and they had a whole separate place with, like, four rooms, and the doors, but just Senator like Jablock, the movies. You, excuse me, I didn't hear that. Speak up. What did you get the 30 days? You mentioned something. For stealing yarn. Stealing yarn. I didn't steal. Somebody had put it in my property. I had my own. I got 30 days for that. In segregation, I try to fight it. Can, can, I don't mean to interrupt you, but we've heard some discussion about um, on the um, the male side of the prison. So, could you describe what goes on? And I assume you're in the female. Yes. What goes on in segregation in the female for thirty days? Tell me what goes on there. Not much. They give you. They'll let you have. Well, back then, I don't know how it is now. It's been eight, about eight and nine years. You could have the GD book and a pencil and that's it. And if you did something with that, they would take it away. That's not in seg down. That's just in a separate wing they had for discipline, discipline. Sorry. D was for disciplinary wing, which was where if you, you know, did something or the officer liked you and didn't really want to mess with you, they put you there. But if they didn't like you, you were going down to the hole. And in that hole, the doors, they're like the movies, they're metal, and there's a slap that opens, and they give you your food, they, like, shove it into you. Um, if they think you're, if they think you're going to harm yourself, they'll take your clothes, and there will be no mattress. It's really cold down there. It was, it was just torture. Um, and, and what was the, I don't mean, again, what years did you serve there? From 1998 all the way to 2008. To 2008. And why would someone go in the hole? I assume there's D and then the hole. So what would, why would you end up in the hole? And uh, like that occasion that I talked about, I was, we had to, we walked in and um, when we had to go to chow or any medication line, um, you were, you were lined up in a one row and sometimes contraband may, may be passed or whatever. Um, there were inmates that, you know, do do that. They pass contraband, a note to their lover or a note to an officer. And there was a note on the floor and it was near me and they accused me of it. It wasn't my writing. It wasn't mine. But I got 30 days in the hole. And as they're taking me away, I'm, I'm crying and I'm telling them it's not mine. I was at the moment involved with CCRI classes. I hadn't been in trouble in a while. I was doing really good. And as they're dragging me away, I'm telling them, I said, that's not mine. Why are you, oh, well, Gonzalez, you know, we're sorry. You know, we have to put you in there. We have to investigate. And I had a, um, a fear of being in the room alone because it had put me there so many times. Um, as a result of them putting me in, um, in that room that night, I tried to commit suicide. I slit my throat. And they had to rush me to the emergency room. Never any mental health. It was always just discipline, discipline, discipline. And it just got to the point where 
I had to tell myself, it's going to be this for the rest of my life or I have to change. And Miss Richmond was always good about talking to me and, you know, having tutors come in and talk to me. Not down there, but when the 30 days ended or the 25 ended, um, segregation didn't help me. It, it made me into a nervous wreck. I hate being in groups of people. Um, I have children now. I am married. I have a normal life. I go to school. I would help anybody in the world if I can. Um, but when I think about that, it, I shake because the the thought of being in a room, in a cold room by yourself, um, nothing. There's the wind. If there was a window, the window was way at the top and it was covered by one layer of bar, another layer of bar. You, no light comes in. So yeah, there's a window, but you can't see out that window. So there is no window. That is a window board. is something you can see out of. So you were there for 10 years. 12 years. 12 years. How much of that time were you in segregation of the 12? A good six or probably six or seven. It six. wasn't until I turned about 20, 21, 22, probably 23, that I said, okay, I have to do something different. And I started taking the GED, class, GED classes consistently and getting involved with CCRI and programs that were in place, which before they didn't have, but they had the nonviolence had come in and I had taken those classes. And Rather than putting me in segregation, apparently that didn't work for seven years, segregating me. But once they started engaging me with these other programs, that changed me. It helped me. It made me become more grateful. I see officers that were a part of that, and I, I hugged them. I'm like, thank you. You know, you helped change my life. But segregation wasn't the answer. So, so when you were released, you were put into, did you seek out those programs or did the institution guide you to those programs? No, I had to seek out those programs. When I got out, um, I didn't know anybody anymore. Mom, things were very different. You're talking from 1996 all the way to 2008, um, things changed because I didn't go straight to the ACI. I went to the training school first, and then I was sentenced and transferred over at 15. And from there on, for a very long time, all my teenage years, my what you would call teenage, just being a normal teenager, being rebellious and answering back. And I did it all at the ACI. And all of that resulted in nonstop confinement in the hole, which is, it's not it's solitary confinement. It's a hole. You're down there. You're buried alive. You have, The only thing you have is what you lived, what you remember you lived. Um books. If you're lucky, you'll get a good book. But it didn't help. It wasn't until I, they started pushing me towards getting engaged with the CCRI and the GED and the nonviolence that I started to change. And I said, okay, well, I like this. Let's try this more. You know, um, I couldn't get off the wing for six years for an infraction that I'd gotten 30 days for. But I kept fighting and I kept writing letters and I kept telling them, look, I'm changing. I'm not the same little girl. I'm different. Look at this. I... All I'm saying is that, okay, I went to prison for something I well deserved. I did it. I'm sorry. I wish I could change it. I can't. But it doesn't mean punish me more and more and more and step on my head and throw me on the floor and throw me into the hole. It's wrong. It doesn't help. Senator Archibald. So, so you went in for, for the to SEG for 30 days initially, and then that 30 days just kept going. You, because of other infractions, mouthing off or whatever, you're young, right? And while you were actually in the hole, in that dark place, that 30 days turned into 60, 90. Is that what you're saying? Help, help me to understand. The way they did it at the Women's Division is you did one infraction. I got caught with a letter, according to them, that wasn't mine. It wasn't in my body. They gave me 30 days for that. Then I would get out, go back into, you know, A or B wing, which was normal status. Then probably another two, three months ago, oh, there goes Gonzalez again. She stole yarn. It wasn't mine. I still, like, they do, that's how they did it over there. They didn't get you in one shot, but they got you more than they needed to for things that you didn't need to go to the hole for. Um, I wasn't combative. I never hurt an officer in the ACI. Um, I became really, really good friends with many of them. And I even looked up to them at, at times because they weren't bad people, except that these laws and rules that they have in place, they have to do their job. But the laws that they have in place don't work. They just don't work. It's proven. It's like if you talk to everybody, 
they don't work. Pushing and shoving and leaving you in a room alone, in a cold room, in a dark room, with no mattress, with no clothes, um, barely feeding you, it doesn't work. If it doesn't work for a dog, why would it work for a human being? It's just, uh, to me, it's common sense. Like, And I learned about common sense in prison and logic because when I went in, I didn't know what that meant. But here I am in front of you asking you to really, really, like, please think about this. It's not about getting off easy if you violate a rule. Yeah, okay, if you violate a rule, you got, you get in trouble. It's not about just those 15 days that you're in SEG or wherever they put you. It's you're losing privileges. You can't get phone calls. You can't get visits. You can't get commissary. And believe it, when you're in there, those things are really important to you because it's the only source of being a human that you have. So when they say that 15 days is not enough, if it's not just 15 days, remember, it's 15 days without visits, phone calls, or anything else that you would have in normal population. It's really, it's punishment any way you put it. But to go 60, 70, 80, 90, 365 days in that cold, solitary confinement, it's just not right. I wish, if you go, like they said, please do go and sit in one of those cells for an hour, see how it feels, mentally what it does to you. Senator Lombardi, again, uh, I want to thank you for coming. But I, again, I want to ask the consistent questions that I've been asking. When, what time frame are we talking about with respect to you? From 1996 till 2008. 2008. Now, I've heard you refer to the word "hole," a hole. Can you describe the cell that you're talking about to me? Um, in the old building, I've never met in the new building, and hopefully, never go. Um, you walked into the, um, it was the Dix building, that building, and the Gloria McDonald building. That's where the AC, the women's ACI used to be. You walked up the stairs, you went into the main area, and they had a big door on your um, left, and you had to go downstairs, like one, two, three flights of stairs to get to another door where they had one, probably like four or five rooms on the left side, and that's the hole. After that, there's no more light. So that's, that's your segregation. Each room would be your segregation yeah say i got in trouble for that yarn thing they stuck me in there and then somebody else was caught doing some um, stealing from the kitchen or you know right smoking a cigarette they would go into the other room now were you there 20 were you there 23 hours a day yes yes 